several individuals in connection with the death of Cal Poly student Carson Starkey as a result of a fraternity hazing ritual. The investigators now believe the teenager got hurt at a fraternity function and that injury then led to his death. A tragedy on campus, West Virginia University is suspending all Greek activity after a freshman died. Blood alcohol level was .493, more than six times the legal limit for driving. Police say Jordan Taylor was at a college Halloween party. Bogenberger was found dead. Alcohol, five times the legal limit in his system. Fraternity suspended. A 20 year old female student was found dead under a party bus. The hazing death of a college freshman, brutal beating from his frat brothers. 37 people face charges. The 18 year old died after being hospitalized Wednesday. 20 year old Jordan Taylor was found dead. A spokesperson for the university says. What is Greek life? Is it just what we see on the news? And why is there so much negativity that surrounds it? There are over 9 million Greek members nationally, and within the past 5 years alone, more than 100 colleges and universities have opened their doors for the first time to fraternities. But if campuses are opening their doors now, there has to be some reason why colleges see it as something beneficial. Maybe it's because of all the accomplishments of Greek life in the past, accomplishments we never really see on the news. Over 85% of the student leaders on some 730 campuses are involved in the Greek community, leaders who make a substantial impact on our communities. Who are these leaders, you may ask? Hattie Carraway, first female senator. Yeah, she was Greek. Sally Ride, first woman to fly in space. Greek. And better yet, how about all of the Apollo 11 crew members? They were all Greek too. Furthermore, every U.S. president and vice president, except for two in each office, born since the first social fraternity was founded in 1825, have been members of a fraternity. On top of that, of the nation's 50 largest corporations, 43 are headed by fraternity alumni. Had enough? Well, there's plenty more where that came from. So why is it that to this day, we only see the negative stereotypes about fraternities and sororities? Well, let's bring it back to a little town called Oswego, population roughly 18,000. What makes this town tick? Some would say it's college. I did think that all they really did was drink and do drugs and all, <laughs> all that sort of thing. I feel like a lot of stereotypes are the hazing, getting beat, and bullied. Some of the perceptions was that you're paying for friends. Um, that was something that I remember hearing a lot when I was uh, looking into Greek life. Another thing is that they're just all about partying. Um, I never really engaged in so much programs or events or activities. so. The only times I would really engage with brothers would be at parties, so sometimes it was because of my own uh, interaction that I would assume things like that. Hello, my name is Edwin Reyes, and I am a part of Phi Oda Alpha fraternity. Um, I am a senior, I'm graduating next semester, and I've been a brother now for two years. Hi, my name is Erin Ham. I'm a sister of Phi Lambda Phi sorority in Oswego. My name is Aiden Velez, and I plan on pledging next semester, fall of 2017. Hi, my name is Evan Bautista. I'm in Zeta Beta Tau Fraternity Incorporated. My name is Nicole Morse, and I'm the Student Involvement Advisor um, at SUNY Oswego, working in The Point, um, and what I actually do is fraternity and sorority advising. Uh, what I do is I work with the fraternities and sororities and the seven overriding councils. Um, we about have about 26 to 27 uh, chapters on campus at any given time. Um, I do all of their uh, risk management education, um, all of their new member education, um, I advise all the councils to make sure that they're setting rules and boundaries for their um, over their under chapters um, successfully. Uh, I work on philanthropy and fundraising um, and just how to educate them to be the best leaders that they can. With the stigma about being Greek is a lot of people just associate it with um, the social aspect and we are, a lot of our organizations are social organizations but we also have multicultural organizations that are founded in diversity. Um, even our women's organizations um, were largely started by women who needed a safe space on, on college campuses. Um, to be women when women were not uh, represented in higher education in, in a meaningful way. Um, even our men's organizations, our a national interfraternity council, our original uh, fraternities, were started because um, there was no place to really discuss issues outside of the classroom. The, 
people lectured and that was what you absorbed. Um, so they created spaces to um, bond and develop social interactions and talk about meaningful things outside of the classroom. But first, let's start from the beginning. So when I first came here, I didn't know anybody whatsoever and you know the whole going down, sitting at lunch or sitting at dinner by yourself um, was quite difficult and so the first people that I actually came in contact with were a part of Greek life and so immediately I was um, introduced to this whole brand new group of people that I really didn't know anything about and starting to become closer with a lot of the Greek men and women, um, I started to learn that it was a lot more than just what um, I had thought of before I came to school here. What made me want to get into Greek life, before when I wasn't in Greek life, I always looked at people in Greek life and I saw qualities of leadership that stood out to me. Not everybody who was in Greek life was a leader so it wasn't perfect, but I did see things that I did not have. So I wanted to be become more of a leader and make those qualities better. One of my close friends, Edwin, is currently a member of Phi Alpha, Alpha, and he's actually one of the reasons I started getting into Greek life, because he started telling me like what it was to be in a brotherhood, and uh, one of my close friends, Irvin, also is, uh, is joining a fraternity as well, so I'm starting to be exposed to all these different um, environments having to do with fraternities and it's, it's nothing like I thought it was going to be before I came to college. One of my jobs is on the back end to make sure that um, they're connected to academic advising and that I'm holding them accountable for bylaws of you know what is the minimum GPA for your sisters or brothers to have leadership positions what happens if they're failing what happens if they're failing again um, what happens when a membership in an organization is actually um, hurting an individual student instead of helping how do you help people how do you raise them up um, and I ask those really tough questions that aren't always easy um, and I do that and I try to go through each type of pillar or each type of um, area of of development that students need and um, Greeks encompass all of that. Um, a Greek organization is about civic engagement, is about community service, it is about that social bond of brotherhood and sisterhood, um, but it also is you know your students first and there is that academic element and um, friendship encompasses so much more. But what you might not know is that Greeks are much more likely to finish college. Belonging to a fraternity or sorority increases your chances of completing a degree with 71% of Greeks graduating versus 50% of non-Greeks. Greek life is all about sisterhood and having a family outside of your family. A lot of people who join Greek life don't have brothers and sisters. I have brothers and sisters. Um, I have two stepbrothers, one blood brother, and I have two half sisters. I really, um, I don't get to see my half sisters very often, so I didn't grow up around um, really any other women besides my mom. And really getting to know a lot of the girls in multiple different sororities, I started to get this concept of sisterhood. And it started up this whole new meaning of what having a sister um, is actually like. I've been close to my family my entire life and now here I am giving other people a try and giving other people a chance because they're brothers, they went through the same process that I went through. You, as a pledge, you go through that process to then in the end just have, have a stronger bond with each other and I believe that you go through that so that way they, they want to know how dedicated you are to join that brotherhood and once you're there they know that you're there for life and you're truly worthy of being a brother. You're joining a family, you know? Yeah, Edwin brought up that you had to pay for it. You know, yeah, you do have to pay dues for insurance, nationals, all that to be continuously recognized. But it's a very, I think, you know, what I joined, I think what I joined was worth every single minute I put into it be just because I'm joining I'm joining I joined something bigger than myself I expanded my network to 93 chapters across this country there's so many things about being Greek that has to do um, the responsibility being able to be creative 
being able to network with others. Uh, a lot of the times you don't even realize how big of a responsibility it is. There's so much more work involved than what people see outside the spectrum of Greek life. It's its own governing body, so it's all completely student run. Where the school oversees each organization, each organization is run by those members. And those members are um, elected officials of each organization. By the way, little known fact, over 850,000 hours are volunteered by Greeks annually. Each member of a chapter has to do five hours of community service every single semester, um, and that is uh, for standards of excellence, which is our accreditation and assessment system. Um, but we have chapters that go above that. Um, we have a service and honor fraternity, um, Alpha Phi Omega. Their members did about 27 hours on average each. Um, Phi Lambda Phi, I think it was 15 to 16 hours. We had um, several chapters who bypassed and did 10 to 20 hours per member of their organization. So they're giving back a lot of time um, to the community. Sometimes, yes, people just do join for the parties, but they don't end up staying that long because like I said, you have to do community service and a lot of other extracurricular activities to be in Greek life. It's not just the parties, um, but the parties are great because we're social organizations. And when you go to parties at fraternities, you get to meet all the brothers who can have a lot to offer you. like in your future careers. Yes. Yo. Every organization has their own philanthropy. Yeah, not saying that there are organizations out there that just are a bunch of guys that just like to drink and party, but I mean, the organization I joined, uh, we definitely uh, have contributed to the community here in Oswego. Um, we raised a thousand dollars in the past two semesters for children, Children's Miracle Network and we do community service. We're very active within the community here in Oswego. In the future we can see um, even more money being donated back. Um, we have chapters that do individual fundraisers that raise uh, two thousand to three thousand dollars in one day. Um, so hopefully this summer we'll get a, a total number. Right now it looks like about over twenty thousand dollars for just this semester alone um, that our Greek chapters have given back. One of my favorite community services was when I had Sasson Field, that which was an event that we do on May 5th. We have food that we create and we give to other students. We have helpers who help, so we give them community hours. So not only are we engaging in community service, we're establishing opportunities for community service because Oswego is a fine community and we want to make it better. So in any way that we can make it better, we want to be able to do that. And not only by ourselves, we want to collaborate with other organizations. So that's where the networking comes in. The more people you know, the more opportunities you can create for community service opportunities you know, walking dogs, uh, volunteering at a farm, um, going at a food bank, dropping off canned and like, non-perishable food items. Uh, we do like a huge can drive here uh, once a year, uh, doing, you know, Relay for Life, raising money for, you know, certain causes. Uh, we've, we've even done events where um, there was an orangutan at the zoo that didn't have a toy to play with, so one week we had raised enough money to get a tire swing and a bunch of little toys for an orangutan at a zoo. It, the community service and the different um, charities and uh, fundraisers that we do, just it, absolutely, it's just across every single board that you can possibly think of. become almost like an instant celebrity. Now before I was Edwin Reyes, you know, people knew me as Edwin Reyes, um, and when I became a member of Greek Life, people knew me as Edwin Reyes, the brother of Phi Iota Alpha. So now um, the fraternity is being involved with my name. So that means that I have to have a huge responsibility, and all my brothers have to have a huge, huge responsibility because if one of them gets careless, Edwin from Phi Iota Alpha now belongs to an organization that this other careless person uh, is also involved in. So they, uh, 
they make assumptions about you before they know you because if you're not representing yourself correctly um, and if they don't know you they're gonna look at you in a way that they already think they know you like I said before like with the drinking and the, the drugs the hazing you know I, I thought it was just like all about partying mainly and it wasn't really anything to be taken seriously hazing is against the law uh, it goes on your permanent record here. Uh, it can affect our students' ability to get a job or graduate or um, have successful lives because it's a serious allegation. It's something serious that our individual members can be held accountable for, as well as our chapters, which can be, you know, suspended from campus activities um, or suspended from taking new members or have uh, other repercussions in that way. And that's we try to make it an individual thing. It's always not acceptable. Well, hazing and alcohol abuse is something that's always been a big concern. Um, back then, it used to be much more of a problem. Now we have hazing. Um, hazing is something that schools and the fraternities try to completely eliminate. As a matter of fact, every fraternity and sorority on campus is a non-hazing organization. Now, with that being said, whenever parties are thrown. It's a responsibility, not only on our hand, but on the hands of everybody coming into our house or any other house. Movies that act like documentaries like Burning Sands that just came out on Netflix. Um, and those are really culturally impactful. You have the movie Haze, the movie Goat, where you see these fraternity involved hazings. Um, you see movies like Neighbors and Neighbors 2 come out that are just, you know, party and rioting and people getting pressured to drink, which we would say is hazing. Um, I think you see, you know, larger institutions like the military um, that haze uh, their members in boot camp, um, and there's this, there's a very large cultural understanding um, that maybe doesn't align with what our mission is for our students. There's obviously organizations out there that haze, but luckily I wasn't hazed. Um, Everything I did is because I wanted to do it. My job and uh, conduct job is one, always to educate and to always have those tough conversations and always to have our students um, be able to uh, get at those tough conversations and um, ask those hard questions so that they really understand what the law is, what our school policy is, um, how it can really impact them, um, what hazing can do to someone mentally, um, and have them hear from real voices and they're adults and making adult decisions and knowing that those there are real consequences attached to those decisions um, and you know that's my job and it, when those rules and consequences and those decisions are made um, there are laws and guidelines and policies and um, school codes of ethics that come into play and that's where conduct in the Dean of Students office really steps in and investigates and holds our students accountable. I think that where it has helped me immensely, I don't think that you just ultimately become a better person because of it. I think you gain a lot of qualities and characteristics that you might not necessarily had before. Being a part of Greek life has really just put, you know, a cherry on the top of, you know, an ice cream for me in a sense that it has really opened up my eyes and it has made my college experience better. Um, better off with it? I would say no. Better person? I would say yes. I definitely feel like I'm a better person. I've learned a lot. Um, I've been a brother for two years now. I've seen the ins and the outs. I've seen positivity and negativity. I've met other Greeks that, you know, are doing better for themselves. And I met some Greeks that, you know, are still trying to find their way. So with me, myself personally, I've come a long way. Um, the person I was before being a Greek member and the person I am now after being a Greek member are two different people. You have a person who's more confident, a person who's trying to find more about himself, a person who's never willing to give up. Um, and that goes back to me pledging, you know, me being a part of the process. You know, I, my process, I never wanted to give up. I wanted to become a brother and that, and that ever since that achievement, I've always been trying to fulfill whatever I put my mind to. It's given me so much and um, I could say it saved my life. Uh, I wouldn't be the same person without it. I wouldn't be in this career without it. 
Um, I wouldn't be helping the people I'm helping today without it, and it's given me, it's given me more than I could have ever imagined, and um, I think I've given back to people and been a part of people's lives that I never would have met otherwise, and um, and I, I'm grateful every single day for that. Why did you join Zeta Veda Tau? I definitely joined it to be unified with a larger network of people, and you know, connected in some way, somehow. This is what connects us, these letters. So many different unique uh, organizations out there. Just go out and talk to them because a lot of reasons why people join Greek Life is because they're social or they want to be social. And just going up and talking to one, um, one person can really change your life. My best advice would be meet a Greek and go to their events because if you don't go, you're not doing yourself justice. It's an assumption. You want to be able to defeat the assumption by knowing yourself. So that's my advice. Can't knock it till you try it. <laughs> Greek life is a loyalty that develops as a pledge becomes active. It is rushing and pledging, meeting and songs, pledge duties and lessons, and the determination to grow as a group, keen competition, close cooperation, it is loyalty. It is campaigns and trophies, firesides and memories. It is a senior's farewell, but a lifelong pledge of brotherhood and sisterhood.